you. Thank you for having us. So, Victoria, what to you is an ideal office design for the millennial workforce? Because the need for belonging and, and connecting are very important to the younger and highly collaborative workers of today. Yeah, I think uh, for the millennials, the, um, the distinction between home and work has really uh, started to blur. So we're looking at uh, creating workspaces that offer much more comfort, uh, much more flexibility um, for millennials. They're looking at things like having a variety of spaces, uh, being able to move around the space, having lots of um, things catered for like their wellness, so having good air quality, natural light, uh, food options. Uh, the list goes on, to be honest with you, um, but they're not unreasonable asks. I think it's very much about ensuring comfort and flexibility um, so that they can do their best work. Yeah, the food options appear most uh, tempting, but would that work too for the older generation and why? Um, I think it would work. I think when you look at uh, wellness uh, design in the workplace, you're actually looking at people as human beings. So you're actually looking at what people need to thrive and survive um, and be their most productive. I think for the older generations, it's more of a mind shift and having to sort of manage through the fact that the workplace is changing. It's not something that they're used to necessarily, but it doesn't mean that it's not going to benefit them. So I think there's a key part for uh, corporations to look at communications and really getting their employees to understand why they're doing certain things and how it can benefit everybody in the workplace and key to this really is that we get corporations on board so Dom uh, the question is for companies that have embraced workplace design strategies what has it meant for both worker productivity and return on investment Dom you know up, up until today it's very difficult to really quantify the impact um, on uh, based on a dollar or a peso but I mean the impact on the energy in the business, the impact on the, um, the overall welfare of the employees would translate to a lot of, um, what do you call this, um, intangible um, positives in the workplace. So we've seen, we are seeing a lot of KPOs coming in, the likes of Google, Wells Fargo, and they are the ones who are pioneering this shift. And um, companies like ours, Scholars International, are also looking deeply into this um, trend because of the positive impact to these employees. Okay, from what we know from the companies that have already embraced workplace design, how much of an investment uh, would it cost a company or did it cost the companies to spend on workplace design strategies rather than just focus, continue to focus on supporting the physical aspect alone of their workforce, Dom? Um, I think the way to s look at it is not on um, cost, but look at it as an investment. Um, because at the end of the day, it's not the physical space that uh, companies look at. It's the welfare of the employees, which, is the, which are the most important asset of the business. So um, it's one way of differentiating for these companies, and it translates to um, a lot more benefit than the cost. Victoria, you're coming all the way from Hong Kong and from various countries where you've worked in. Are Philippine companies ready for this mindset shift in favor of redesigning workspaces to promote uh, employee engagement that goes beyond productivity and, and looking after their happiness at work? Yeah, I think the Philippines have um, they've not been the forerunners. Um, we've seen Australia really taking a lead, uh, China have jumped on this in a huge way um, and I think we're starting to see that mindset shift come to the Philippines right now. Um, I feel like uh, the fact that the, it is a huge, huge center for lots and lots of big brands as well as local companies is really driving that force. As we just mentioned, millennials are uh, increasing their expectations and I think employers are starting to realize that as Dom said, it's not a cost, it's an investment and they can get more out of their people, um, especially with the war for talent in Asia. I think a talent at, uh, attraction and retention is really, really key to the success of any business and as companies realize that uh, incorporating uh, wellness into workplace design can help with that. Um, I think companies in the Philippines are really ready to take this on board. Now you've consulted over 25 projects in the region including the uh, first commercial project to achieve well certification for Asia uh, for Haworth in Shanghai. What would it take for a Philippine property developer to achieve well certification? Um, well, there is one Philippine property developer actually already going through the well uh, certification process. 
Uh, for a developer, it's looking at the core and shell of the building. So we're actually looking at uh, construction materials, providing good air quality, making sure that there's uh, natural light, etc. Uh, for an occupier going into a space, it's um, a little bit more not only the physical space, but also looking at policies. So what policies are they providing for people to actually um, get the most out of that workplace? What furniture are you putting in? What work settings have you got? Are the acoustics um, appropriate for the environment? So there's lots of different dimensions depending on the project, the location and the type of company. All right, well, thank you for letting us in on the workplace design concepts of today. Thank you so much for joining us, Victoria Albert and uh, Dominic Andaya joining us from Tagig.